in this lesson, we learn about Thevenin's theory. Okay, so we use this Thevenin's theory when we want to find the current of voltage across a particular resistor. So in this case, let's say how these three ohms resistor here, and, and I want to find the current through this three ohms resistor here. Then I'm going to apply Thevenin's theorem here. Okay, so to apply Thevenin's theorem, we have to follow some steps here. Okay, so the first thing you have to do is to remove the load resistor and then mark the two terminals. Okay, so the load resistor here is the resistor whose current of what if you have to calculate for. Okay, so we remove the load resistor and then mark the two terminals. So after that, then you solve for the voltage across the two terminals. So after solving for the voltage across the two terminals, then you solve for the, the total resistance of the open circuit. But before you can solve for the total resistance of the circuit, you have to short circuit voltage sources and then open circuit current sources. So if you have any voltage source in the circuit, you have to short circuit it and then if you have any current source, you will be executed before you calculate for the total resistance of the circuit. Then after that, you draw a table in the current circuit and then you connect with the load resistor. And from there, you calculate for the current in the circuit. So this circuit I have here is the table in the current circuit. We have our table in voltage, table in resistance, and then the load resistor whose current and voltage as well to calculate for. So for the point two and then the point three, you can interchange them. You can choose to solve for the Thevenin's voltage first before you find for the Thevenin's resistance, or you can calculate for the Thevenin's resistance before you calculate for the Thevenin's voltage. It doesn't matter. You still get the answer. So let's try some example for us to understand better. So I have this example there screen here. So you are going to calculate for the current flowing through this three ohms resistor here using seven inch theory. So let's look at how I'm going to do that. So first of all I'm going to take away the three ohms resistor here. Okay then I will indicate the terminals. So when we look at this circuit here have Terminal A and then terminal B here. And also, previously, you learned that for you to be able to calculate for the effective resistance or Thevenin's resistance, you have to what? Short circuit all voltage sources and then open circuit carrying sources. But in this circuit, you have just two voltage sources here, so you are going to short circuit these two voltage sources. That's how can the circuit has become this form. So after having this, we can now calculate for the what? Seven inch resistance. So when you look at these two resistors, you see that they are in a parallel connection. So their effective resistance, which is RTH, which is RTH, will be equal to a product of what? 12 and 6. Okay, divided by the sum. Okay. So when I do this, this will give me the value of what? Seven inch resistance. Okay, so this gives me a value of what? Four ohms. We have what? Seven inch resistance to be equal to what? Four ohms. Now let's calculate for seven inch voltage. Okay, so we are going to calculate for seven inch voltage here. So you see that I've taken out the load resistor, which is this three ohms here, and then I've indicated the terminals with A and B here. Okay, so you can the direction of the VTH here. It doesn't really matter. Okay, you can choose to make the direction be in this in this way. Okay, it doesn't matter just that you get the same values, okay, but the signs will be different. Okay. So looking at this current value here. What happens here is that when this current I here is coming from the 42 volt source and it gets to this node here, due to the open circuit here, this current will not flow in this direction. So all the current will flow back to 
this resistor here okay since i have two i values here okay so due to the opening circuit here okay when the current is flowing from this source and gets to this node it won't flow into this direction to rather come back to this 6 ohms here okay so as a result of that the current i here flowing through these 6 ohms the same current that flow across this 12 ohms here okay so first of all you are going to calculate for the current i and then after calculating for the current i we will be able to solve for vt so i'll take this loop okay which i'll name a b c d so i'm taking loop a b c d a that's the loop i'm taking so looking at the positive side of this voltage source here i'll consider the current in this loop or the direction of this loop to be in this direction okay so this is the positive direction for this loop and we learned earlier on that petrol voltage law state that the sum of the voltage drops in the loop to also the total voltage in that loop and then looking at this loop the total voltage is what 42 volts so that was the 42 volt will be equal to the voltage drops and you know that the current that flows across these soft ohms will be the same as the current that flow across the six ohms so that was the current i so i have what 12 i here that's what 6 i okay so this will give me 42 equals 18 i so i divide both side by the 18 so that i can find i so both side by what 18 so after doing this that's what you get 32 divided by 18. So this will give you the value of what i to be equal to 7 over 3 amperes. Okay, so this is the value of what i. Okay, so now that we know the value of i, we can go ahead and solve for what vth. So I'm going to take this loop, which I name B E. Okay, I'll name here F. So taking loop B E F C B. Okay, that's what loop B E F C B. Okay, so taking this loop, taking this loop, I'll consider the direction of this loop to be in this direction here. Okay, this is because of the direction I chose for the VTH. So this direction will be what a positive direction. Okay, and we know that what Ketchup voltage loss is that what the sum of the voltage drops in the circuit should be equal to what the total voltage in the circuit. So looking at this loop here, it has what two voltage sources here. Since we are treating this VTH as a voltage source, so in that case you have VTH as a voltage source, and then you have what this 35 volts also as a voltage source. But we know that what the sum of the what, the voltage drops will be, should be equal to what the total voltage. So that means for some VTH and then this 35 volts, it should be the same as what the voltage drop in this loop. By looking at the direction of the VTH, it is moving in this direction, which is a positive direction. But this 35 volts here has its positive side pointing towards the direction of what the VTH. So that means this voltage is moving in a direction opposite to the VTH. So we are going to negate, negate this voltage. So therefore the total voltage in the loop would what vth minus the 35 volt since it is moving in a direction opposite to the vth this will be equal to this voltage across the six ohms resistor here and then looking at the current also it is also moving against the direction of what the vth so that's also what a negative voltage that was minus what six i Okay, so let's simplify this. So that will give me VTH to be equal to minus 6i plus 35. Okay, but I know the value of i to be 7 over 3. So that will give me VTH, VTH to be equal to minus 6 multiplying 7 
over three. Okay, plus thirty-five. Okay, so let's copy this and see what we get. So minus six multiplying seven over three plus thirty-five. This will give me the value of what VT to be called what twenty-one. So this is the value of what VTH. So now we know the value of what RTH and then we know the value of what VTH. So with these two values, you can now calculate for the value of what the current flowing through these three ohms resistor. So let's look at how we are going to do that. Okay, so now this is how our circuit will be. Okay, so because we solve for the 7 inch resistance and then 7 inch voltage. We can now do our terminate equivalent circuit. Then we bring back the load resistor, which is these three ohms here, to the terminal that we are open. So this is the circuit that we have now. So we are asked to calculate for the current flowing through these three ohms resistor here. So that would be very easy. So we see that all these three ohms and then the terminal resistor, which is all four ohms here, are in, what, in a series connection. So which means this current I here. The same kind of flow through these four ohms and then the same kind of flow through these three ohms. So you are going to find the value for this current, and then that will be the same kind of what flow across through this three ohms resistor. So I'm going to do that. So you are going to find the effective resistance here, and that will be what then we name the effective resistance as what R. So that will be equal to what? the four ohms plus the three ohms. Okay, that will give me how to be equal to. 7 ohms. So that will be the effective resistance for this circuit. I know from ohm's law, voltage, voltage equals what? The product of what? Current and then resistance. And we want to find current. So current will be equal to voltage over what? Resistance. And you know the voltage, which is VTH, to be what? 21. So that what? 21 divided by what? 7. So let's look at what will happen here. So when I divide 21 by 7, this will give me the value of what I to be equal to what? 3 amperes. So that will be the current flowing across this 3 ohms resistor. This is how to apply the Thevenin's theorem to a question. So we take another example to help us understand this better.